This recording is a crash course in domain modeling. It's not meant to replace uh, all of the lectures, but uh, to give you a quick and short introduction to the topic and present the most important parts. So, the purpose of a domain model is to show what information is needed and the structure of that information. This means that a domain model is visual, it's focused on information, and it's structural. To visualize a domain model, we use the simplest form of UML notation, the class diagram. This is basically the notation you need to use for a domain model. We have classes, customer, order, and item description. We have some attributes, possibly, that are important for customers, name, and address. And we have the relationships, in this case, associations between the different classes. An association is something that we need to remember over time to fulfill the requirements. So in this case, we're looking at some kind of e-commerce system, maybe, where customers has orders. And you can imagine that it would not be good to lose orders. So we need to remember which customer has which orders and the item descriptor that are contained inside the order so that we can ship the correct items to the customer. This is something that we need to remember over time as then we use associations. We have also added the association names. Here we would like to have descriptive names. In this case, uh, maybe they are quite generic, but it's just an example. We also have the multiplicities on the association. This means that the customer can have several orders, zero or several orders. That's the star. But an order is always connected to one and only one customer. This means that we cannot have any floating orders. So if there is an order, it is connected to a customer. Oddly enough, we can have an order that contains zero or several item descriptions. Maybe that's a little bit odd. This is the basic notation. Boxes with names, associations. There is basically just one more uh, thing for the notation, and that is generalization and specialization. But that is covered uh, more in detail in the lectures, so we will leave it at this. So, the notation is actually not a big deal. The problem is, of course, how do you create a domain model that is good? To do this, we start with the requirements. We can imagine that we have a student schedule uh, system where students want to view schedules and we have an administrator that wants to change the template for a schedule. What information is shown, maybe, maybe some layout and stuff like that. There are probably also other requirements here. So we can show this in a use case diagram where we have the actor, student and admin, and we have the use cases, view schedule, change template, and so on and so forth. To create the domain model from this could look something like this. You have the student class, you have the schedule class, you have the template class, and we have the admin class. We show that the student prints schedules, that the schedule uses a template, and the admin changes a template. The problem with this domain model is that it is quite useless. It says exactly the same thing as the requirements. Maybe except for that schedule and template are in some way connected. So this is quite a useless model. The domain model should not simply reflect the requirements. It should support the requirements. It should show the information we need to fulfill the requirements. So this is not a good domain model. So when we create the domain model, we need to think about what information is actually needed. In this case, what does a schedule actually show? Probably the time and dates of schedule events for a course a student is registered to. What about the template? Is it one globally applied template? Does a student select the template when viewing? Do we need to know what admin has changed the template? This is typically for good domain modeling. 
you get a lot of questions. Stuff that's not specified in the requirements. Stuff that you need to ask someone for clarification or make decisions about. In this case, we simply decide that the student will select a template when viewing a schedule. And we do not need to know who has changed a template. This would lead us to a domain model that looks something like this. A student, we need to know the courses the student attends and the events that are scheduled to this course in order to show a schedule for that student. Now the domain model actually supports the requirements. It does not simply reflect them. The schedule template is some, somewhat of a free floating class here. That's not a problem. In the requirement of viewing a schedule, the student need to select the template. Then this is just a temporary thing, it's not something that we need to remember over time. So there will probably not be a need for any associations in this case. We also do not need to add the admin actor here. We don't need to remember that the admin has changed the schedule. So no association is needed. So remember, the domain model should support the requirements. It should provide the information needed so that the requirements can be executed. With the multiplicity of the associations, that in some way may be constrained the requirements. So for example, we cannot have free floating events. And in the previous example, we could not have free floating orders. Orders are always connected to a customer. And in this case, an event is always connected to a course. So to conclude, the requirements delimit the domain model. It sets the limit for what to model. The domain model refines the requirements. If you ask questions about the requirements when you do domain modeling, you are probably in the right track. Requirements are really good at specifying behavior, rules, activities. In short, requirements are often dynamic. They tell what should happen if this happens, what should happen in this case, what should the system do, who does what. The domain model is static. It shows information, the relation between these information blocks, and it should support the requirements. In short, the domain model should provide the information needed so that the requirements can be executed. If you remember this, you should be fine.